Um, welcome back to Poetry Lockdown. We're at day 137. Um, I'm excited about today because I am uh, returning to the work of a poet I featured uh, more than 100 days ago. Um, I looked back through the uh, the videos. It was day 30 that the last time I had a Patrick Rosal poem. Um, and this is, is a new, uh, another poem by him. Um, I'm such a huge fan of his work, um, and I just wanted to note before um, introducing this poem and and reading a little bit about his process, because he was uh, generous enough to correspond with me about this poem. I just wanted to note, um, Patrick Rosal, in addition to being a terrific poet, um, is also a great essayist, um, and I just link you to a couple of essays um, that, um, that have been in my mind over the last couple of months, um, and an interview with the poet. Um, just... Uh, just an, a, a really great thinker, um, as well as a terrific poet. So, a little bit about the poem that I'm going to read from. So, I just, for my birthday, my wife gave me a little gift card to a bookstore, and I got Brooklyn Antediluvian. It's one of, I think it's his most recent collection. Um, just a number of terrific poems in here. Um, but the poem I'm going to read today is called, it's a, it's a, it's a long title, um, Lone Star Kundiman, parentheses, for the guy who seized my arm after I accidentally cut the line for the toilet in Austin. <laughs> I love the title. Very intriguing. Um, and I looked around on the internet. I didn't see any full text to this. And it's a longish poem. Um, so if you're on Facebook, I did I did uh, project an image of it. So if you want to check back to my po page, you can see. Otherwise, get by the book, you know, <laughs> support poets. Um, so before I jump into the poem after that long title, um, let me just give you a little bit uh, of um, from the correspondence that, that Patrick and I did. He was, he's, he was generous enough to correspond when I read his first poem uh, back, I think, in April, and he did again with this poem. I love this, uh, this, this paragraph that he wrote to me about his process. He said, poetry has been a site to find a form for feeling, echoing Dickinson. And our feeling as Filipinos, as non-white, has been left to interpretation by white institutions and white folks. More specifically, we are meant to abide by a prohibition of feeling, especially sadness and anger. The poem is a reclamation of a space in language and art for anger and heartbreak, which arguably share a space with love. That is, if we care to look carefully enough. What, what a beautiful way of introducing this poem and talking about this poem. And maybe it's it's helpful to know Kundiman. I had to look this up. And and Patrick Rosal, if I'm stating this incorrectly, please correct me in a comment or something. Um, I believe is, is a Filipino word for uh, a love song. Um, so it, and, and it was and it has been used for serenades and things like that. So this is a really interesting title. Think about this poem before I read it as a love song, Lone Star Kundiman. For the guy who seized my arm after I accidentally cut the line for the toilet in Austin. I keep saying it was the way you took my arm. The small, imperceptible squeeze, that tiny shove, the way you told me, get to the back of the line. How you eyed me to my place with your little smirk. Some keep saying it was the rum. I keep saying it was history. Truth is, I could have done much more than smack you a couple of times across your right eye. Truth is, I couldn't stop to consider how we both live in a country mostly afraid of the difference between strength and power. Three times I warned you not to grab me like that again. You did it anyway. I'm long familiar with both the master's sinister hand and mine. And I, unlucky, couldn't bring myself to wish a single kind thing for my puny heart. Just like the pop songs preach, if I had to do it all again, I wouldn't change a thing. I promised no more heart songs, but some want to hear what a heathen prays for when he bows his head and drops his fist. In Texas, you can sit in a diner packed with white folks who dip their sweet potato fries in honey Dijon while you practice what it's like to be the last man on earth or the first one to land in a city where no one sees you. 
You can pray for an ordinary night, a stroll down a side street off West 5th where locals nod and say, good evening. You can head to the John with your bladder throbbing like a jellyfish and trust the gentle manners of the South. Well, after I was ushered out, I walked the half mile with a friend from Tap Lounge to El Camino, laughing at the way you touched your own soft hand to your soft cheek, jaw dropped. For though I was the one kicked out of the bar, you would most likely grab another brother not so easily again. I guess whoever taught me and you about love, they taught us wrong. My hands quick trip from my hip to your chin across your face is not the first free lesson I've given. And you're not the first knucklehead I've had to instruct in the company of strangers with an open hand, left cross, delivered like a love song. Consider it a public education, no white boy left behind. <laughs> yes, that's Patrick Rosal, uh, Lone Star Kundi Kundiman. Love this poem. Um, love the ending. And I think um, if, if, if you stuck with me through that poem, I think you can understand the title a little better. Um, I love um, An open hand left cross delivered like a love song. I don't think I've ever read a line quite like that one. Uh, it's beautiful. It's funny. It's moving. Uh, it's Patrick Rosal. Um, I read a little bit from his correspondence as an intro. Um, I'm looking back through the, the correspondence to see if there's something else that would be helpful. This is, this is kind of cool just in terms of like what, what, what generated the poem. He says, what I can say about process is that I was teaching at UT Austin, living there for a year. SXSW, I think that's a music festival, was in full swing, and I had inadvertently cut the line when a younger and larger man put his hands on me with a tone that was all too familiar. I think, perhaps, he hadn't expected my physical response because of the proliferation of stereotypes about passive Asians. If it's not already clear from the poem, it was racialized bullying, or an attempt at it anyway. So I smacked him with my weak hand as he looked back at me flabbergasted, since I had violated the terms of America's caste system. I paid for it, of course, since I got kicked out of the bar. But me and my buddy David had a good laugh about it as, as we found another establishment on the other side of town. The metaphorical resonance in this country abounds. So thank you, Patrick Rosal, for your, your generosity in sharing about your process for generating this poem. Um, and just for this beautiful work of art. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. Hope you have all, you all have a good rest of your day.